Hello and welcome back and today in the absence of some brand new two and four bay NASs in the early stages of 2019 I thought it would be worth revisiting some of the big hitters in NAS currently available and seeing how they compare. Some of them such as the Synology DS218 Plus have been around now for longer than a year coming close to a year and a half give or take whereas other newer units from the QNAP such as the TS251B have somehow you know they're about halfway through a year something like that maybe four to five months and a lot of you, because in the absence of anything newer and more exciting, are looking at the existing series of units to find out two things. One, do they still cut it? And two, should you go for a Synology or a QNAP NAS? So we're going to compare these two devices and go through basically what's good, what's bad, and why one should be more for you than another. So let's start with the Synology. Let's move the QNAP ever so slightly out of there and focus on this Synology NAS. Now, this Synology, known as the Synology DS218 Plus, was released uh, in November of 2017. Give or take, maybe October, September. And again, the unit itself retails for about 250 quid, unpopulated, and it supports Synology's DSM software, that's DSM 6.2 currently, with DSM 7.0, hopefully in beta, very soon. A 2.8 is easily one of the best-selling home NASes currently. Um, this and the DS918 Plus are two of easily their most popular devices for home and small business users. It's a two bay device, so once you remove that front panel, you can look inside and see two bays that you can populate with hard drives, as well as a front mounted USB one touch copy port and LED lights all along the side. These bays themselves can be removed and they are click and load in design to put the hard drives inside. See if I can put that in there without looking. The sides of the device on this plastic chassis have got the Synology logo ventilated so you can see all the way through but moreover to get that nice airflow running all the way through the device from that rear fan. The rear fan on this device it's a single fan that can be completely controlled and the RPM the rotations per minute can be increased or decreased manually or automatically to heighten the cooling in this device or lower the noise depending and the same thing goes for those LEDs that can be dimmed or brightened up as needed. Also on the back we have two USB 3 ports that can support external hard drives as well as supported USB peripherals such as UPSs, wireless dongles and more and it's also one um, RJ45 LAN port there for network connectivity. So again, no link aggregation here, but you've got those options. Finally, we have an eSATA port or expansion port as they like to call it, and this lets you attach eSATA storage devices, primarily the DX517. Now that expansion device does not let you expand your RAID to include these two drives. In the case of this device, you can only use it as separate storage. This device can see it and build a RAID on it, but you can't add the two drives inside here to five more drives of media inside that chassis. And that's really it for the hardware on this device. It arrives with a couple of uh, LAN cables and an external power brick. So if we take that off camera, we'll make our way onto the other device. Now, once again, this is the newer uh, release. This is the TS251B from QNAP. First and foremost, it's about the same price, about 250 quid. So it's a newer device that's at the same price as the old one, and it has very similar internal hardware that we'll get onto later on. <clears throat> but this two-bay device, again, very similar in the external there. We've got LEDs there, it's slightly different chassis design, and a USB one-touch copy button on the front as well. And again, you can't use these USB ports, by the way, on either of these devices to access the contents of the NAS. You can only use them for supported peripherals over USB, uh, in the case of QNAP, keyboard video mouse, that we'll talk about later on, and UPSs and such. So if we remove this side panel, we can have a look inside the device. We've got two hard drive bays, and once again, these hard drive bays can be removed. They click and load, so no screwdriver required, and there is screw holes, just like on the Synology, for two and a half inch media. Slot that in there. Pop that back on. We won't be able to lock up on the side. The chassis itself is plastic, but white this time. And we've got ventilation there on the top, but not the snazzy logo of the company like we saw on the Synology. And both devices, I should mention, have also got ventilation on the bottom of the devices. If we go to the rear, we can look at some of the reasons why QNAP NASs, uh, for many users, are just a different kind of beast to the Synology. Whereas the Synology was dedicated almost completely to network and external storage access, which this does give you with its one LAN and USB ports. You've also got audio out and import for microphones and speakers. 
you have an HDMI port, which is HDMI 1.4B, which means you can then get media output on this device, which is always fun. And going further down, we've got two more USB 2 ports, which can be utilized for peripheral devices, keyboard, mice, um, wireless uh, dongles, Bluetooth dongles, printers, you name it. You, there are loads of support perifer peripherals there, as well as a rear fan as well, once again, lower, lower or heighten the RPM as needed, and a rear speaker. So the two devices in terms of construction are quite similar, but the key difference between them is more than just simple hardware distinctions. If we look at these devices as they are, we can learn a little more. Now, in the case of both of these devices, they arrived with their own operating system on board. The Synology arrived with something called DSM, Disk Station Manager. And Disk Station Manager, currently version 6.2, is easily the most user-friendly of the two. It's geared more towards Mac users, if I'm totally honest, the way it's laid out and a lot of the difficult choices are hidden in the background. And on top of that, the device itself arrives with a number of apps that run very well on its internal hardware that I'll get to in a bit. There's a great surveillance platform. There are certain applications that this doesn't support, such as the virtual machine software, but things like Active Backup, Plex, uh, Synology Drive, Synology Moments, Synology Chat, Synology Calendar, all of those great first-party apps run on this device. Moreover, there is support of third-party apps, but there's no denying that Synology would rather you use their apps more. They've spent a lot of time and money developing alternatives to chat, uh, or sorry, alternatives to WhatsApp and Skype in the form of chat, alternatives to Google Docs and Microsoft um, Office with their own Synology Office app. They've got all kinds of applications, including, of course, that active backup sync, which you'd have to pay a lot of money for externally. And, of course, their surveillance software, all of these things, they've spent a lot of time and money to make their own branded software that the majority of that 250 quid that you're paying for for this device is going towards. Whereas on the QNAP, the QNAP first party apps are good. They've got some great first party apps there. And indeed, both of them have some great mobile and desktop applications too. But QNAP's real abilities range in the fact that it supports a lot more third party apps. Everything Plex, Kodi, virtual machine use, container station, Linux station and more. On top of that, they've got up and coming and developing first party apps in the form of QMaggy and their existing selection of applications are pretty deep too. Now one of the th um, things that we really need to focus on between these two that will separate the men from the boys is to do with the hardware inside. With these devices, when I mentioned Synology's price model, that 250 quid is largely based around software. I meant that. The majority of the money you spend on a QNAP NAS goes towards that, oh no, on a Synology NAS goes towards that software because they prioritize that software. Now don't get me wrong, on the QNAP, a lot of the money you spend going goes towards warranty, service, oh sorry, both of them have got two years of warranty. But with the QNAP, you just get better hardware in most cases, not just that HDMI output and stuff like that, but if we look at the rear, one thing I didn't mention on purpose was that PCIe slot. This gives you the ability to add PCIe cards such as 10 gigabit ethernet, wireless cards, SSD cache slots over MSATA and NVMe. This device lets you expand more over time. Moreover, you can connect QNAP's expansion devices to expand your storage in a way that this only lets you use independent storage. In terms of hardware, this is the greater device. Now, both of them have got the same CPU, the Intel J3355 CPU. It's a dual-core CPU, 2.0 to 2.5 gigahertz. And that dual-core CPU arrived with 2 gig of manufacturer's warrant, uh, memory. But the Synology officially cannot be expanded beyond the uh, memory inside. I believe you can expand it officially to six gig, but we've got it a little higher than that, but I don't recommend it. The QNAP can be upgraded all the way up to eight gig officially, which is always handy. Now, the main distinguishing choice between these two for you out there is going to be how you prioritize software over hardware. If you're gonna use third-party apps, if you're gonna utilize this NAS as more of a storage device that you run your third-party apps externally on, this will definitely be the better device. If you're a Windows or Android user, you will definitely enjoy the QNAP operating system more because it's more configurable. You can do a lot more with it and tweak and do more with your hardware that you just can't do with the Synology. The Synology, on the other hand, is an incredibly user-friendly device with a fantastically intuitive software that, although the QNAP is quite easy to get your head around, 
the Synology is super easy. And you can navigate through a Synology with almost no network knowledge at all. The QNAP, you just need a pinch. But there's no denying the Synology requires a little bit, uh, sorry, the Synology requires a lot less knowledge overall in this industry or data storage or IT at all. And that's it really. If you are looking for a device that's easy, if you're looking for a device that you can set up and forget, and if you're looking for a device that you want to use the brand provider software, go for the Synology. Because right now the DS218 Plus is still a fantastic NAS. It's popular and we're not seeing any sequel on the horizon and you can get it a real bargain right now. Alternatively, if you like to configure, if you've got a more bespoke um, setup, if your file structure is a little bit more unique and if you have a pinch of technical knowledge, if you want to utilize things that are more direct attached then they are just network because although both of these can be accessed via the network or the internet, this device gives you HDMI and remote control support and a mobile remote control app too, which means this can be accessed in a number of different ways and can be expanded further in terms of memory, in terms of PCIe and more. So once again, of the two, the QNAP is far more future-proof. Both of them support RAID. The Synology has SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID, the more adaptable RAID. It is a great device. And once again, the software is better, but the hardware is better here. And if you're going to use the NAS's own apps, maybe go for the Synology. But in almost every other way, I'd recommend the 251B to anyone that has a pinch of knowledge has their own apps in mind and is looking for better value for money. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll be covering a few more of the existing range of NASs from these two brands very soon. So don't forget to click like and subscribe or find those videos to learn more about this subject. See you next time.